Before we get started with today's story, I want to sincerely thank you for leaving some excellent comments on episode 80. By and large, the episode covering the portfolio waterfall was very well received. However, you all have some wonderful questions, and I love that you do. Trying to understand how this works and if there's an error in it is awesome. My favorite recommendation to come out of the comments so far is I should take a portfolio and test it one way, test it with the traditional distribution strategy that would under normal wisdom apply to the 4% rule, and then take that exact same portfolio and run it through the portfolio waterfall and see if there's a difference between the two and how they perform. So we're comparing apples to apples. We're not comparing, say, my 401k or the S&P 500 to a portfolio that was selected by Josh Curtis that is more or less honed to the portfolio waterfall a little bit. That way we can really see if there's a genuine efficiency that comes just from the strategy, or we'll see if the portfolio waterfall is extra dependent upon fund selection, and if that particular fund selection would do just as well with a more traditional strategy. Either way, what we're looking for here as a community is the pursuit of truth and the pursuit of genuine understanding so that we can better our hope-filled financial futures, and I'm here for it. I'm here for the pursuit of value that is provided to you through different financial strategies and services. That's really what we want to focus on today in the main topic, the fees that financial advisors charge. And are you getting your money's worth? Are they providing value to you? How can we gauge that value? And it reminds me of a situation I'm dealing with right now. I had a totally different story planned, but I just came in from the garage because we got home from a trip, a good long trip, drove probably four hours the other night. And there was a tire on my vehicle with a slow leak. The tire was a little bit low before we left for the trip, so I aired it back up, and it was fine on the way out. But by the time we were on our way back home, the tire was getting low again. I inspected the tire after we got back and couldn't see anything that was obviously wrong with it and figured maybe it was a rim leak or something. Maybe I should put in some slime or some sort of product like that that helps seal gaps if there's some sort of tiny, tiny leak, and that would fix it. At least that was my intention. I went to the auto store, I bought one, and I bought one that wasn't meant for passenger vehicles at highway speed, so I returned it and got another one. And after adjusting the tire to apply this internal sealant of sorts, I noticed something that I missed. There is indeed a nail-type object that is lodged in the tire. It's a miracle that we didn't get a flat, and it's a miracle that we made it all the way the other night without any difficulty. And now I have a decision. I can either go and get a proper plug kit to plug up the hole now that there's one that's obviously there, or I could take the vehicle to a tire shop and have them patch it in a way that's probably going to last longer. I have never patched a tire. I could maybe watch a few YouTube videos, buy some of the materials and figure it out, or I could take it to the tire shop and pay anywhere between 15, 30, maybe 50 bucks for them to patch it. As an alternative to doing it myself, I can hire an expert who's done this hundreds of times before for a relatively small fee. It's hard to remember, but every time we get behind the wheel of a vehicle, we are trusting that vehicle with our lives. We're also trusting our due diligence and maintenance on that vehicle with our lives, with our health, with our safety. It is important to recognize how much risk a damaged tire can pose to you and other drivers on the road if it goes unfixed. And even though it might be simple, there is a risk in doing it wrong. And I personally, with everything else that I've got going on, don't want to take the risk of doing that myself. I want an expert on this. But you might say, Jay, patching a tire is easy or putting a a plug in the tire is easy. I've done it before. I could do it again. Why can't you learn to do this one yourself? And this comes down to a difference in comfort level. You have experience with it. It's something that you may feel comfortable doing, but that's not going to be true for everybody listening. And I want you to keep this in mind as we roll into the main topic. 